Hello and welcome, my name is Alan Huang, and in this introductory demo for Mapping Toolbox, we'll be taking a look at Web Map Service or WMS capabilities. WMS is a protocol developed by the Open Geospatial Consortium for rendering, reprojecting, and making georeference images available over the internet. Now, Mapping Toolbox enables you to find a server, define a custom query, and retrieve a map into a file or directly into the MATLAB workspace. So in this demo, we'll be downloading current radar weather data and overlaying it onto a backdrop. So let's begin by looking for a current picture of Earth. A database of pre-qualified WMS servers is included in Mapping Toolbox, enabling you to avoid the challenges involved in identifying appropriate WMS servers and data layers. In this cell, I use the WMS find function, which allows you to find servers by keyword, layer name, server URL, and many other parameters. In this case, I'm looking for servers hosted by JPL or Jet Propulsion Laboratory. As you can see in the command prompt, there are a number of JPL servers available to you. To find a picture of our planet, I narrow the search by using refine and the layer called daily planet. I've narrowed the search to a single server, and I can now download the default image by using the WMS read function. Here's JPL's current image of Earth, which I display using imshow, a function in image processing toolbox. In later sections, we'll take a look at how to customize a query and retrieve a specific part of the data layer. Let's create a map of the continental United States where we'll plot our weather data. With the USA map function, a map is created and a projection is automatically chosen to display our data. The GeoShow function reads the USA state high shapefile that comes with Mapping Toolbox and places the state's borders onto the map. In these functions here, I'm recording the latitude and longitude extent from the map axes so I can use them later on as an input parameter when downloading data from WMS servers. Using the WMS find function again, I search for the blue marble image and display it onto the new figure. Here is where I use the latitude and longitude extent from the map axes to customize my query to the WMS server. And as you can see, the server returns only this portion of the map. In this cell, we make even greater use of query customizations. Let's search for weather data by using NextRad as our keyword. Now, NextRad stations are multiple radar sites that can measure precipitation and wind. As you can see, I can specify not only the latitude and longitude extent, but also image height, width, and background color. The WMS server will resample the underlying data for me, making it very convenient to overlay data. This figure here displays the storms that are currently over the United States. Let's go ahead and combine the two data sets. Here I use some MATLAB functionality to find pixels in our weather data that have a value greater than zero. Now these values are going to be our storms in our weather system. I can capture these indices, replicate them so that I can index them into the red, green, and blue channels of the data, and then I can use that to overwrite onto the backdrop. Now this figure here shows that we've successfully combined our two data sets. Let's take our weather data and make some calculations about the size of the storm. But we first need to segment out the major storm in our image. And I can use the green channel to do this, since green is closest to rain. Using IMTBW, an image processing toolbox function, I can convert our image into a binary image where a value 1 indicates the presence of a storm and 0 otherwise. Mapping toolbox functions can calculate the area of polygons on a map. However, we first need to find a border or polygons to these storms. There are several image processing functions that can help us in this task, and the first one we'll evaluate is called region props, which calculates all sorts of statistics for objects we've segmented, such as perimeter, centroid, and in this case, convex hull and area. Now the area is measured in pixels and hasn't taken geography into account, but we can use these values to find the index to the largest storm in the United States. By using this index, we can then access the convex hull of the storm and pass that over to our mapping toolbox functions. To make that pass, we'll use the picks to lat long function. Now, this function makes use of the referencing matrix, which specifies how the image is oriented geographically. And as you can see on the figure here, the convex hull is now shown around the storm. A second approach is to use the BW boundaries function, which is also an image processing toolbox. Now this will give us a type boundary to the storm, and this function returns the boundaries to all objects in the image, as well as a label matrix, where each storm receives its own number or label. I can then use the hist function to generate a histogram and calculate which bin 
or label, uh, has the most points. This is likely going to be our largest storm. Now using these coordinates, I can then use the pixel at long function again and convert our boundary into latitude and longitude through that referencing matrix. As you can see here, the boundary, BW boundaries technique has given us a tighter boundary around the storm. Lastly, we can use the area int function from mapping toolbox to calculate the area of our boundary or polygon on an ellipsoid. I use the units ratio function to convert to square miles and display the result in the command prompt. With this example, we see how we can use Mapping Toolbox to interact with WMS servers and manipulate our data with functions to quantify the size of a storm. Now, once you download mapped layers from WMS servers, you can use many other Mapping Toolbox and image processing functions to create solutions for your geospatial application. For more information on Mapping Toolbox or Image Processing Toolbox, please see other demos available at www.mathworks.com. Thank you.